This video will discuss chemical potential and chemical thermodynamics. So we've mentioned previously that in equilibrium, the Gibbs energy change during a process is equal to zero. So for example, during solid liquid coexistence in a phase diagram, the total Gibbs energy of our substance is the Gibbs energy of however many solid particles we have, plus the Gibbs energy of whatever particles are liquid. So the solid and liquid can coexist together, and in the coexistence curve, they're in equilibrium with one another. So the change in Gibbs energy, as we change the number of particles in the solid and liquid phases, is going to be the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy of the solid with respect to the number of solid particles at constant pressure and temperature times the change in the number of solid particles or moles, for example, since I'm using lowercase m, that's usually an indication of moles of particles. Plus the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy of the liquid with respect to the number of moles of liquid at constant pressure and temperature times the change in the number of moles of liquid. <clears throat> so now we're assuming a conservation of matter. So we have some kind of closed system the number of particles is equal to the number of solid particles plus the number of, sorry, number of moles is equal to the number of solid moles plus the number of liquid moles. So the change in the total number of particles equals the change in the number of solid particles plus the change in the number of liquid particles, which is equal to zero because we have conservation of matter. Our closed system, the number of, the total number of particles does not change. So this means that our change in the number of liquid particles, or liquid moles, is equal to the negative change in the number of solid moles. So now we can substitute in for <clears throat> DNL here. We can substitute in negative DNS. So the change in Gibbs energy as we change the number of solid particles is the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy of the solid with respect to number of particles minus the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy of the liquid with respect to number of particles, each of those being at constant pressure and constant temperature. Okay, so now with these derivatives popping up in this equation, it's convenient to define a new quantity. We're gonna say mu alpha is the part of alpha being a phase. So mu alpha equals the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy of phase alpha with respect to the number of moles of particles in that phase at constant pressure and temperature. So mu is a function of pressure and temperature, as we can see, because we're keeping it, both of those constant there. And mu alpha is called the chemical potential. So it's the change in Gibbs energy per uh, number of moles of particle in that phase. So the change in the Gibbs energy from changing the number of solid and liquid particles is the chemical potential of the solid minus the chemical potential of the liquid times the change in the number of solid particles. And for any spontaneous process in a closed system at constant temperature and pressure, this quantity has to be less than or equal to zero. All right, so what if the chemical potential of the solid is greater than the chemical potential of the liquid? So if this is greater than this, that means this is greater than this. This quantity is greater than zero. So for this whole quantity to be less than zero, DNS must be negative. So if the chemical potential of the solid is greater, then the change in the number of solid particles must be negative. Particles are flowing from high potential solid to low potential liquid. If the reverse is true, if the chemical potential of the liquid of the solid is lower than the chemical potential of the liquid, then this minus this is a negative. So for this whole quantity to be less than zero, DNS has to be positive. So if the solid has the lower chemical potential, particles flow from the liquid to the solid. If they're equal to one another, then that means that this term here is going to be zero. So we're going to get the equal case. So if they're equal to one another, that means the phases are in equilibrium with one another. So the criterion for the equilibrium of two phases is that their chemical potentials are equal. So this sort of implies from what we've been saying thus far 
that particles prefer to, f to flow from phases that have high chemical potential to those that have low chemical potential. The phase with the lowest chemical potential is the one which is the equilibrium phase at a given pressure and temperature. So if you have a system with a single phase, the chemical potential is the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the number of particles, which is just n times the molar Gibbs energy. So d dn of n times g bar is just g bar. So for a pure substance in a single phase, the chemical potential is just equal to the molar Gibbs energy. Um, we're going to use the concept of chemical potential because we're moving forward, we're going to be using this not only for pure substances, but also mixtures of things and, and situations where it won't be nearly as, as obvious as the uh, chemical potential being the molar Gibbs energy of the system.